Welcome everyone to the second video on your DMM. And today I'm going to show you how to use a breadboard, how to connect the circuit up, make a complete circuit, and uh, also walk through way to make it, but using the different to making a current measurement, I don't, I don't know the true value of, and I don't want to blow my meter. So uh, we're going to work on a couple of those things. Uh, we're going to talk about um, how to measure, you know, why you should measure all of your components before you start. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to actually do this kind of in reverse. I'm going to measure all of the components and uh, measure the current, and then we're going to backtrack and, uh, you know. Um, calculate what it should be based on our measurements and then see if we're making a good measurement or not okay because normally we would do it the opposite direction we would draw the schematic do our theoretical calculations and then see how real world components compare to that that's usually the operation but i'm going to go in reverse because i've already set up to to uh to video this portion of it so let's go ahead and first talk about the breadboard okay and uh get this stuff out of the way here so you can see if I can zoom in All right. so this is what comes with the kit and uh, you remember from the other video I believe you have to put this metal backing on it's just got some adhesive on it and so uh, you can see that there are groups of holes together and the very first thing I'm gonna point out I'm gonna use my lead here because this has been a great pointer Right. If you notice, probably the first thing you notice is these colored rails on the bottom and on the top. Okay, those are individual nodes. In other words, you can see here where it's blue and where it's red. Do those colors mean anything? No. Right. They're just a visual cue to help you, um, you know, remember if you wanted to use them that you could put the plus here and the minus here, and then. You know, that kind of mimics the hot and the cold or the hot and the ground or whatever. Uh, but they have no bearing on the function of the breadboard at all. They're just a visual cue for you to line things up nice and neat. Okay, so those four are kind of on their own. And so as you make your way across this entire top, and I think, excuse me, I think there's 65. I think there's 65 of these. They are all soldered together underneath for one big long node. And the reason why is if you choose to use these outer terminals for different voltages, if you put your voltage source in right here, uh, and let's say it's our 9 volt battery that we're going to be using, then you can have 9 volts and pull off here. You can pull 9 volts off of here or off of here or off of here. And if you want to use the top one for your ground, if you put your ground in up here, or you know you could put it in here for all that matters, um, you could pull ground from there, or from there, or from there. Okay, so it's just a way to to utilize the entire breadboard and not have to daisy chain a bunch of stuff together uh, in terms of the power and the ground. Uh, now sometimes I don't even use those outer terminals. I'm going to today just to show you how I would use them if I did. But typically I just go right into the board and build on this part of it. Okay, but I know a lot of my students like to keep everything separate and um, nice and neat, and uh, so I will show you how to do that, okay? So there's four of these rows total uh, as you have the board horizontal this way, and uh, so you know though you, would, you should look at those as four separate nodes. They are not connected underneath. I know these are grouped together in two here, but they have no connection from top to bottom and top to bottom here. This row is not connected to this row, okay? But all of these in the same line and all of these in the same line are their own node and they're all soldered underneath. Now, in terms of the center of the board, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it here. And uh, so for one thing, if I can hold my hand steady and focus in, you can see here that at the top of the board, you know, there's a plus and a minus there. Again, that's just for you if you want to keep it all straight by color. Uh, but those are just markings on the plastic. So they have no bearing on the functionality. In terms of the middle piece, you see there they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So your first instinct might be to think that, wow, you know, this is, you know, this is terminal J or something like that. This very, very last one. All right. That is not how it works. 
In fact, they are groups of five. All right, there's no connection. If you were to saw this in half right down this middle, uh, each side would work independently as, it, as if it were one piece, okay? So there is, no, there is no connection underneath from the left side to the right side of what we call the bridge in the middle, okay? Now, the reason why you see the letters is because over here, you might be able to see the numbers. So really, you know, you, you could look at this like, almost like an Excel spreadsheet, okay? So if you wanted to, to specify a certain terminal, you can use the row and the column, Okay, so like C10 would be this one right here, right? Now, we don't get that detailed in this class. Like you have to put this lead on this, you know, we, we, we don't do that. But I'm just showing you why this stuff is marked on here, okay? So as long as you just keep, you know, like I'll, I'll just do this right here. That group of five right there is all soldered together underneath. That is one single node, okay? Over here on this side... That very first row, that group of five, that is one single node. So if you wanted to make a connection between two components, we can do that here. All right. So I have this resistor. I'm going to put it here, and it doesn't really matter where I put it. I'm just trying to get it in the board. Okay. So if I want to connect this lead right here with the lead with this side of this resistor, then I need to put them in the same group of five here. So let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you. Okay. So you can see there, they're on the same group of five, right? If I miss, this is a common error right here, okay, where you miss it by one. See, that one on, I, I don't even know what line that is. I'm not going to try. Uh, you know, but that one right there is not the same as the one below it. And so those are not connected right now. They have to be on the same group of five to make a connection. Okay. In terms of bringing the voltage in on the outer rails, I can go ahead and do that as well. Now, normally, um, normally the power supply is going to have a couple of leads that come off of it. And, uh, you know, more than likely they'll have alligator clip leads or something like that. Now, our 9-volt adapter, as you can see here, has these, these two wires that come off it, obviously. And I know they're kind of hard to see here, but these are braided or uh, stranded wire. So these do not fit into the breadboard very easy. If you want to go into the breadboard easy, you want to have a nice solid core uh, wire like... Did I go the wrong way? Yep, there we go. You want nice solid core wire like this that comes with the, the kit that you bought. Okay, this is a little bit thinner wire uh, than this is. And so I think the easiest thing for us to do, because those are threaded, is to take, you know, kind of extend these with alligator clips. So I'm just going to plug, if I can get a grip on it, Okay, so that's black to, for the black one, and then red for the red one. Now, I'm just doing that so it's easy to see on the video, but you can use any color. It doesn't matter. The color is just the, you know, the color of the insulation on the wire. So, so there we go. So I've got the connections made out of my supply, and now I can use these to power the circuit. Okay. Now, obviously, you can't jam an alligator clip in there. So I think the easiest thing to do is if you wanted to use the rails like I was discussing, I typically like to have my red at what I, whatever side I consider the top, and then I like to have my black uh, at the bottom. Now, I'm just going to use the outer. You know, I actually use both uh, reds there, but I guess I'll use the blue down here. Doesn't matter. Okay. So there we go. So now I have some place to stick this. So let me go ahead and get these connected. And I'm going to go black here, and I'm going to go red here. Okay. So now I've got my 9-volt uh, my power on the board, and I've got my, you know, I've got all my cords hanging down out of shot here. Uh, but just remember that these alligator clips are clipped onto that 9-volt source. Okay. 
So in terms of making a connection on the board, first resistor I'm going to use is this one right here because we're going to be using it all semester. Okay. And these are always the toughest ones to do. Okay, so this is, if I bring it a little closer or a little bit farther, brown, black, red, gold. Brown is one, black is zero, red is two. So this is a 10 times 100, which is 1,000. So this is a 1K ohm resistor plus or minus 5%. Okay, now I'm going to do another video that explains the resistance measurements more in detail, but you know from the chapter three lecture that uh, that would calculate out to 1K ohm. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of these component values and I'm going to actually, I'm going to measure the voltage out of the volt, the, the nine volt battery, and I'm also going to measure the actual resistance of this 1K resistor. All right, so let me bring my here, bring my meter in. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and I want to make a resistance measurement first. Okay. Now, how I arrive at which, which range I want to be in for what function I'm in. Okay. This is, I, I calculated just now that this is supposed to be a 1K ohm resistor. All right. Now, right now, I've got it in the 2K ohm range because... One kilo ohm is more than 200, but it's less than 2K. So when, you're, when you found the range where your resistor is, use the top end of the range. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this range will measure up to 2K. So that's where I want to leave it. All right. Now, when it comes to making the resistance measurement itself, you do not want to have a live circuit. Okay. Now, the easiest way for me to do it is to hold the body of the resistor in my thumb and well unless i uh drop it of course so i've got it in my thumb and forefinger and then i can use my uh, leads here to kind of press on the outside of the leads okay now i just put a bunch of glare on that so let's try this again there we go now because it's in the 2k ohm range it's actually giving me a measurement in kilo ohms that's why it says 0 0.985 all right so um you know i can't put it down in the 200 ohm range because it'll overload so i just i know that 0 0.985 kilo ohms if i remember my g capital m k underscore m u m p mnemonic device right? Uh, I move the decimal place three over to the right and I get 985 ohms. Let's call it that. All right, so 985 ohms. I'm actually going to write that down because I want to remember the value of these. So 985 ohms. So it's actually a little bit lower than uh, 1K, which is what you'll find typically. All right, now I want to measure the 9-volt battery. Okay, so I want to go over I'm coming down to the 20 volt DC range. You can see that right there. Because 9 volt is greater than 2, so I don't want to be in the 2 volt range, uh, but it's less than 20. So I want to go to the 20 volt DC range. Now, there's two ways that I can do this. Well, there's a couple different ways. But um, one way is to take the adapter off the 9 volt battery and just measure it straight out. Um, the other way to do it is since you do have these since you do have these alligator connections you could measure like i could measure the voltage right here where my two forefingers are right at the alligator clips because those are connected directly with con with conductors directly to the nine volt source so that's one way to do it i think probably the easiest way is to just pull it out of the adapter and then grab my leads Pull this over into shot and make my measurement. Okay. So the positive lead goes on the small nib, and then the big, big flat one is the negative. Okay, so there you can see I'm right at 9.5 volts. So this thing started at about 9.62. 
earlier in the summer, and so I've actually used about 120 millivolts of it. Okay, so I'm going to note that, that this is 9.5 volts exactly. I'm going to put this back in its adapter. Okay. So now let me back out. And so I've got my resistor measurement. I've got my voltage measurement. So now I want to make a current measurement. I want to see how to make a current measurement for uh, a simple circuit with just one resistor in it. Okay, so I'm going to move this off to the side. And so now I've got 9 volts at the top. I've got ground or my negative at the bottom. I can place my resistor anywhere I want. And so I'm just going to place it right here and right here. Okay. Now, I need to make a connection from one side of the resistor. Okay. Move this over here. So I've got to make a connection from that side of the resistor to the ground. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the same group of five here, right next to that lead, and then plug this into the negative down here. Okay, so you can see my uh, connections. All right now, I also need to make a connection from this lead over here, this side of this resistor, over here to the power. Okay, now, if you watch the ammeter lecture, you'll know that you have to break the circuit. Okay, now I'm going to show. I'm going to go ahead and connect this and show you what a, a, a connected complete circuit looks like. So if I do this. Okay, I now actively have a, uh, a, a live circuit because I've, I've connected it, okay? And so uh, if I want to break the circuit, I can do it anywhere I want, and I'm probably just going to go ahead and do it right here, okay? So what you have to do is you have to take your ammeter and put it in the circuit. It has to become part of the loop, all right? Now, what, what that means for the multimeter okay is that you have to move the red lead from here over to here okay all right you also have to be in the proper range now i don't know what this actually i do know what it is because i calculated it in my head but i'm going to assume that i do not know what this current measurement is going to be and so i'm going to start in the 200 milliamp range right and if it's too big if it's too high a range i can move it down to the 20 milliamp okay but typically i always start here just in case right and as i said i don't believe that we are going to be making any uh current measurements that are higher than 200 milli if we are i will explain uh i will explain that in detail for each lab okay so i want to start off in the 200 milliamp milliamp range back out here And I'm going to go ahead and insert this in line. Okay, so I'm going to make a connection here and on the other side of this resistor. So there we go. I've got 9.4 milliamps. I made it part of the circuit. Okay, so 9.4 milliamps. Now, you saw that there was only two digits of resolution there. So I believe that I can go down into the 20 because 9.4 is less than 20. So let's see an extra digit of resolution and what that looks like. Okay, so now I'm down in the 20 milliamp range. And I, I didn't mention this, but the black lead of your ammeter should be closest to uh, the black lead of your battery. So that's over here. And your red lead should be closest to the red side of your battery. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in again. And normally you wouldn't want to touch this, but I'm just doing this for this video. So now I've got 9.41 milliamps. So I got a little bit more resolution. It was actually pretty close to 9.4 right on the right on the money. But I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, okay, if I have this connected, all right, right now I have a live circuit on my breadboard. Okay. I've got a live circuit. It's running right now. There's a voltage drop across this resistor if I were to measure the voltage right now. Um, but obviously, I have no meters to tell me what's going on, right? It's just running. I'm, I'm wasting electrons from my, from my battery uh, as we speak. 
Uh, but I kind of use, you know, an extra wire here, kind of like a switch to turn it on and off. And so wherever you pull this up, you just insert your ammeter right in place. Again, I kept my, my red lead closest to the red terminal of the battery, and I put my black lead closest to uh, the black terminal of the battery. Okay, what will happen if you have the leads flipped? Well, let's do it and see. Back out, whoop. You can probably predict what's gonna happen just like with the, uh, the other one. So now I'm gonna put my red lead here and I'm gonna put my black lead here. So there you go. I got uh, essentially, neg oh, I don't know if the negative came up on the, with the glare there. Let me try this again. So uh, I'm so used to doing it the right way here. Pull that in with no glare and then make connection. Make a good connection. How about that? There we go. Negative 9.4 uh, milliamps. So it's just going to put a negative out in front if you're if you're just measuring your um, resistance current. Okay. So I think that basically walks us through how to make a uh, a simple current measurement with the ammeter. And uh, hopefully this helps explain how to use the breadboard. I know I got some emails on that. So um, any more questions, feel free to email me. And I will get more in depth as the circuits become more difficult. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the whiteboard. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at what we just did and see if it makes sense, okay? So we just had a 9.50 volt battery that's attached to a, what did we call it? That was a uh, 985 ohm resistor, okay? So it's pretty easy to see here, the total voltage 9.5 volts, the uh, resistance value, 985 ohms, okay? And when we did the current measurement, when we put the ammeter in here, we measured a current, from positive to negative, we measured a current of 9.4 milliamps, okay? So to see if that's correct, if we set this up or not correctly, I can do I equals V over R because that's just a rearrangement of this, right? So I equals V over R, which is 9.50 volts divided by 985 ohms. So let's check TI and see how we did. So 9.5 divided by 985, and I get 9.64 milliamps. Okay, so if I just go by the voltage that I measured, uh, and I go by what I measured on the resistance, uh, it's saying that I should get 9.64 milliamps. What's going to happen is, um, my guess um, is that it's if I were to make the measurements now, whoop, there goes my, my battery. Okay, so what I was saying was, uh, my guess is that under load conditions, that this is not exactly 9.5, that uh, because we have and we haven't covered this yet, but inside of your 9-volt battery, there's what it's called an equivalent series resistance, okay? And when your battery is under load, that tiny little resistance in there is going to drop a small amount of voltage, okay? So it's probably dropping this amount, right? So that's like 240 millivolts difference. So my guess is that's being dropped internally here under load, uh, and that's why we're getting a smaller current, Okay, so just something to watch out for. Uh, this doesn't operate like a typical 
you know, like a like a, uh, a variable power supply that we might plug in in the actual lab. Okay, so uh, but just know how your battery operates. The only way to know is to just keep building these circuits and keep doing these examples just like this. Okay, thanks for watching.